us to be balanced. The internet offers countless self-help articles about finding balance in your life. Magazines devote entire issues to leading a balanced lifestyle. So many reminders in so many different places about the importance of balanced sleep, balanced diet, balanced exercise, downtime, you name it. Major world religions stress the importance of balance. The Buddha tried the extremes of self-denial and austerity and instead settled on the middle way. The yin-yang symbol of Chinese philosophy is a visual representation of the centrality of balance. Balance is good, they all say. We all need balance. I need more balance in my life. Too often, I'm overly busy, always doing work or chores or the next household project, and I need to remember to slow down and relax sometimes. Balance is good. That's what they say. And imbalance is bad, painful, or difficult. Working 80 hours a week truly is not good for you. Eating sugary foods at every meal, probably not so good for your health. Coming up to the front to hear your dad tell a story when you're two years old and having to be taken to the back of the sanctuary afterwards, very sad, as we heard. Imbalances that are forced upon us can be painful or sad. The death of a loved one usually throws people's lives out of balance. Falling off a balance beam is bad. Falling off a tightrope is definitely bad. Having our entire lives thrown out of whack by the pandemic, really not so good for most of us. Imbalance? Imbalance is bad. We've likely all experienced this truth at some time in our lives. Balance is good, imbalance is bad. Pretty straightforward. There's another part to the truth about balance, though, that we don't often talk about. Imbalance is good, and balance is bad. Imbalance is good, and balance is bad. Let's talk about balance being bad for a minute. Our country resides in an uneasy balance of living peacefully, living peacefully with ongoing systemic oppression. Until recently, we've lived in a peaceful society that is often only experienced as peaceful by those with privileged identities. People with marginalized identities have not been living peaceful lives. For too long, though, the prevailing narrative has been that everything has been fine. But everything is not fine when black people consistently live in fear of being shot and killed by the police. That is not living at peace. Rape culture and toxic masculinity have been the status quo for decades. Women living with ongoing trauma is not a healthy, balanced peace. And sadly, that list goes on and on. We could name so many more non-peaceful, imbalanced things. As the great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther, Jr. King, Luther King Jr. noted, there are some things in our social system to which all of us ought to be maladjusted. There are some things in our social system to which all of us ought to be maladjusted. Some folks fondly remember the 80s and 90s as a time when we were less polarized, where everybody just got along. All of these problems still existed back then, though. We had just swept them under the rug in, an, in the name of a false harmony, a false peace, a false balance. In recent years, many of us have been trying to push back against this unhealthy equilibrium with movements like Black Lives Matter and hashtag Me Too. We've been trying to upset the current balance of power, and there is more work to be done on that front, as we know. Now we're narrowing our focus a bit from the whole country to our individual lives. One of the barriers to change identified in the family systems therapy framework is that most family systems achieve a state of balance, even if that balance on the whole is unhealthy for more or one or more members of the family. And so family system therapists have observed over and over again that if someone in the family tries to shift the system by changing their own behavior or maybe by setting healthier boundaries, this often ends up creating an imbalance in the existing system. And what do systems like to do? They like that balance, even if it's unhealthy. And so the people in the family tend to push back against the changes, to force the system back towards old, unhealthy balance. 
And so the person making the change, the person trying to upset the existing balance, actually has to try to force the family system into sustained imbalance so that it can then shift into a new and different and hopefully healthier state of being. So balance isn't always good. And as we've seen in a couple of these examples, imbalance isn't always bad. Sometimes, imbalance is a happy part of welcomed new phases of life. Moving in with a romantic partner, for example. The couple of times I've done this in my life were exciting step forwards in the relationship. And it also led to some imbalance for a while as we adjusted to living with each other. Having children, another choice that most often is a happy and joyous experience. As a parent of four, I can personally attest to this creating a huge imbalance in your life compared to how things were before. And yet it's also wonderful. Sometimes imbalance is good. You may be beginning to see a pattern emerge in these examples. Balance, or a broader definition of balance, is about having everything stay the same as always. It's about adjusting and readjusting to find the next, better, healthier, sometimes more just balance. It's a process that never stops. We are always doing the balancing dance, falling out of balance, returning to balance, sometimes returning to a new and different kind of balance. Now, falling out, and of, falling out of and returning to balance is not always fun. When you're learning to ride a bike and you fall over and scrape your knee, it's not so fun to be imbalanced. More recently for me, it's been a while since I learned to ride a bike, um, the falling has not been fun for me in yoga class. For a long time when I started doing yoga, I immensely disliked the times when we had to do balance poses. Love yoga, didn't like the balance poses. I would keep falling out, right? Tree pose, losing my balance, putting my foot down, stumbling on my mat. And then I'd look around the classroom and see all these other people who seemed to be effortlessly holding their pose, and it didn't help. What did help was the first time one of my yoga teachers said this. It's okay if you keep falling over. When you're teetering, you're actually helping to build up your core strength, and it's your core strength that will eventually help you find balance. So teetering and falling is good. It's going to help you find your balance. It'll help you get there. Now, I have to admit, I was pretty skeptical the first couple of times I heard this. It turns out to be totally true, though. Trying to hold a balanced pose and losing your balance and trying again, it does help build your body's core strength. And as it turns out, the same is true for our emotional and spiritual core strength as well. When we fall down in life, that imbalance and rebalancing can help build spiritual resilience. For example, if you wanted to learn to be more patient, if you would set that as a goal for yourself, you can't just make the decision and then it happens, you're magically more patient, right? You have to try to be more patient, and then you lose your patience, and then you try and you reground, and you try again, and you, you go falling in and out of that balance until you get stronger at the skill and increase that core strength. Balance, imbalance, balance. Developmental psychologist Robert Keegan suggests that to move forward through our various stages of growth and maturation across our lifetimes, that we need, among other things, what he calls a function of contradiction. I imagine that function of contradiction as a push, a creative tension offered or found in a place of love and care, which makes sense that we sometimes need to be nudged out of the place of balance we're living in. Because while spiritual balance is a good thing in so many ways, spiritual complacency is not. There are times in all of our lives where our spirits are calling for some imbalance, a push, a nudge, so that we can grow more deeply into who we are meant to be. I experienced one of these spiritual nudges when I was 29. I was comfortably working in business with no plans for major changes in my life when my company was purchased. Six months later, I was downsized and suddenly collecting unemployment. Don't get me wrong, this was a tough experience for me. I wouldn't recommend it. And I had been wanting to change careers for a while. Actually taking the steps to make the change was hard, though, especially because I wasn't clear what I wanted to shift into. 
Getting laid off forced me to work really hard over several months to figure out what it was that I wanted to have come next. And so while I can't say that I'm glad I was let go, I am grateful that it happened. It's possible that I would still be working in business, measuring my productivity by satisfied customers and money made for the man if that particular imbalance hadn't been forced upon me. Sylvia Borstein, in her essay, Don't Just Do Something, Sit There, neatly sums up this concept of, concept of balance and imbalance, coexisting and complementary harmony. She wrote, Equanimity doesn't mean keeping things even. It is the capacity to return to balance in the midst of an alert, responsive life. I don't want to be constantly calm. The cultural context I grew up in and the relational life I live in both call for passionate, engaged response. She continues, I laugh and I cry, and I'm glad that I do. What I value is the capacity to be balanced between times. Instead of treating balance and imbalance as opposites, Borstein models for us the value of embracing both. And the challenge for us this evening is the second part, embracing imbalance. Because it's embracing the imbalance that makes the balancing look easy from the outside and makes it second nature on the inside. Once you've practiced the imbalance of riding a bike, the balancing becomes second nature and you don't even think about it anymore. When you practice a yoga pose consistently over time, your muscles gradually strengthen and you start to subconsciously make the small constant adjustments needed to hold the pose. And our lives can be like this too. If we lean into the imbalance, increase our core spiritual and emotional strength, and learn how to consistently make small adjustments in our lives, many of those adjustments can become second nature. We will always have new balance skills to learn, of course, because life is never easy. And there are certain areas of imbalance, such as anti-oppression work, where we may need to regularly be intentional despite whatever skill or muscle memory we build. And life can be easier, we can be more relaxed, more at peace if we embrace imbalance as a natural, even necessary part of life, of living in balance, and of, fi of finding and evolving into the new balances to which life is constantly calling us. Friends, while balance is good and important in so many ways, there are also some things in our social system to which all of us ought to be maladjusted some places where we need to continue to work to create a sustained imbalance so that we can upset and transform the current balance of power. While the quest for balance remains a healthy part of our personal and spiritual goals in many ways, may you also embrace those times where a gentle nudge of creative tension offered with love is what you need to help you forward on your journey of growth and evolution. As you go about your days, as you go about your life, May you find greater ease and acceptance as you dance the balance in balance, balance dance and build your spiritual, emotional core strength. May you and may we embrace imbalance. balance.